hi, this is Chris of Light and Joy Designs, and welcome to the Crochet Magical Mystery Tour, a year-long crochet along where each week I present you with a free pattern and video tutorial. There's monthly giveaways and more. The links to sign up are in the description below, and you can also sign up by subscribing here on my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the sideways wavy Tunisian knit hat and cowl set. And I am so excited about this project because, uh, you know, when you have something in mind and then it comes to fruition, it's like, you know, it's just very exciting. Um, and also I think you guys are going to absolutely love this because What's nice about this is um, it's worked in Lion Brand's Color Made Easy yarn in the colorway Prism. Um, and when you work in Tunisian crochet, this is it has the look of knit, but it's, it's worked in the knit stitch, but it is, um, it is Tunisian crochet, it's not knitting. And so because of that, it's really nice and thick. This is a, a light number five weight yarn. And um, so this hat is really squishy. It's really warm. Sometimes when you make crochet hats um, or knit hats, they're a little flimsy. They're not so warm. This one is really uh, solid and warm. So uh, before we start, if you do like getting free videos, um, be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up before we get to the end and everybody forgets. Uh, that helps me out a lot. So thanks and let's, um, let's get started. All right. For this project, you're going to need one ball of Color Made Easy by Lion Brand for the cowl and at least one and possibly a little bit more of a second one for the hat. This is a five weight yarn. This one is in the color Prism. Uh, it's 247 yards. And um, we are going to be using a nine millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. I'm using the Denise set and I'll have a link down below. I highly recommend these, this set. Uh, measuring tape, yarn needle, and a scissors. The cowl is going to be six inches from top to bottom. Uh, probably actually a little bit more, six and a half inches. And the total width at the top is about nine and a half inches across, or that would be 19 inches around. In the center, it's about 20. And at the bottom, it's um, more like 22 inches. And that's because this pattern is worked this way. This is our starting row. We work all the way around and then we sew the last row to the first row. For this pattern, we are going to be working the same sections that we did in the wavy Tunisian crochet cowl, um, but we're not going to be working the ribbing. So we have section A plus B, section C plus B, and we alternate those. For the cowl, you are going to be working this pair of sections five times, and then we sew the, the first row to the last row. And to start, we are starting with 16 plus 2 because our repeat is 8. So we're doing two of the repeats plus two stitches. That's our end stitch and our uh, starting stitch for a total of 18 stitches. For the hat, instead of working, here we worked two repeats. For the hat, we're going to work one, two, three repeats. So that's going to give us a hat that's approximately nine inches high. 
and approximately 22 inches around at the circumference. Uh, in Tunisian crochet, a lot of times your um, the right hand side of your work or the starting edge of your work is a little bit looser than the left hand side of your work. Uh, you can work to even that out, but a lot of times that just kind of happens. Um, but we're going to take advantage of that in this hat, in that when we make this into a hat, we're going to have a whole nother section here. And that will, the tighter section is the section that we will close up together at the top. And the, the looser section will be the section that's down at the bottom. So what I would recommend for you um, to get your hat to fit you perfectly is to take a a beanie that fits your head well and measure it. So this one is just a little bit loose on me and it is nine inches tall and it is 22 inches circumference. So the 22 inches is is going to be perfect um, and what I'm going to do is instead of um, The pattern calls for, you have your repeats, and then you have your starting stitch and your ending stitch. Because I want, and we're, we're working in this direction, back and forth like this. So because I want this to be just a little, I would just really want to make sure that I get nine inches. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have two extra stitches on this end so that when I gather it up, I'll be assured that my hat is the right size. If you, you know, so if you're, if you determine that you need a hat that's say eight and a half inches tall, um, then probably just the three repeats will be fine uh, without the two extra, the two extra stitches at the end. And when I say two extra stitches, I mean two extra stitches before the end stitch. So let's get started. So for the hat, we're going to have our beginning stitch. We're going to have one repeat of our pattern. We're going to have a second repeat of our pattern and we're going to have a repeat number three of our pattern. Then we're going to have two extra stitches and our end stitch. For the cowl, it's going to be your beginning stitch, repeat one, repeat two, and then your end stitch. And then the this portion here, the repeat, is what I'm going to be teaching you. And that is these two sections. So section A and section B kind of make up one section. And then section C and section B make up the second section. And we're going to do, you work A and then C, A and then C, and so on. And we're going to work this pair a total of five times. So you'll have 10 sections alternating between section A and section C. And there's always going to be a section B in between each of them, which is just a, a row of just knit across. So let's take a look at how that looks. So right now I'm going to teach you via the hat. I'm going to be making the hat. Um, if you're making the cowl, you're just going to start with a total of 18 chains and for when you start and you're just going to work two repeats instead of the three repeats and then uh, and you won't have these these two extra stitches here one and two you'll just have your edge stitch at the end so that's the only difference between these two 
for the hat, we are going to be chaining 28 to start. And the, the start and the, the working of this pattern is going to be the same. This is the only difference is how you begin it. And also that you just have these two extra stitches here on the end that you don't have here. This is your end stitch and this is your end stitch. So for both the hat and the cowl, you're going to start with a slip knot. Place that on your nine millimeter hook. And for the cowl, you're going to chain 18 and for the hat, you're going to chain 28. To make a chain, you just yarn over, pull through one, just like that, just repeatedly over and over. Okay, so we've just done our chain, and for the first row is gonna be our foundation row. I'm just gonna put an F here to designate that for the foundation row. And the way that that works is we start in the back bump of the second chain. In the front we have these V's in our chains and in the back we have these back bumps. And we're going to be working into that portion of the chain because it's going to leave a nice edge at the bottom. It makes our work look a little better when it's finished. So this is the first chain back bump. This is the second one. So we're going to go into that back bump Pull this loop snug on the hook so it's not loose. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Very simple. And then we're just going to do that into every back bump of the entire chain, of all chains, all the way to the end. This is the forward pass in Tunisian crochet. Every row is worked in two passes. The forward pass, we are adding loops onto our hook. And on the reverse pass, when we work back this way, we are removing, we are removing the loops from our hook. So the, the right side of our work is always facing us. So as you're picking up these loops, just make sure that they are all the same size, not too tight, not too loose, and all uniform. Okay, I'm just here at my very last chain. I'm going to go into this back bump here. And with Tunisian crochet, you should have the same number of loops on your hook. As long as you started in the second chain, you should always have the same number of loops on your hook as starting chain. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 28. If you're making the cowl, you will have, you should have 18 loops on your hook unless you if for some reason you decided you want it to be taller, you can, you could add in um, an extra repeat. So now we're ready to do our return pass. And a return pass has two parts. The first part is we yarn over and pull through one loop. That creates our edge stitch. And then the rest of the way, we do yarn over, pull through one, two loops, like that. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And just like with these loops, you wanna make sure that these, these chains, you're creating a, a set of chains on the return pass, you wanna make sure that they are all uniform as well, that they're all the same size. So that means kind of feeding up your work as you go along, not making some tight and some loose, but having them all be about the same size. 
and you just keep doing that until you have just one loop left on your hook. Okay, I'm here towards the end, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. One loop left on my hook, that means I'm done. So we have just completed the foundation row with our forward pass, adding loops, and with our reverse pass, closing those loops off or removing them off the hook. In the reverse pass, we've created a chain that essentially goes through these uh, vertical bars through these vertical loops. So just to give you a lesson on what these the different parts of, of the stitch are called. This of course is our starting chain and you can see why we worked in the back bump. It makes this really pretty uh, bottom edge. These uh, loops that used to be on our hook now become what's called the vertical bar the front vertical bar and the back vertical bar right there. The chains from our reverse pass have three parts. This is called the top horizontal bar. This one's called the, the lower horizontal bar. And then in the back we have, again, the back bumps. Um, sometimes they'll call it the the top, the top bump or something like that. And then um, the stitches that we're going to be working today are called knit stitches and they are worked by going right in between the front vertical bar and the back vertical bar. We go right into that space there. There is a space that's between the stitches. We're not going to be going into that space today. That's for when you're making a what's called a full stitch that we won't be using that in this pattern today. Okay, so let's take a look at row one of our pattern. So for row one, we are just going to be working a, a row of knit stitch across. And the way that we do that is we take our hook we always start in the second stitch because this first stitch corresponds with the loop on our hook. So this is actually our first stitch. So in making our second stitch, uh, we're going to make a knit stitch and we're going to go right in between this front vertical bar and this back vertical bar. We're going to go all the way through to the back. Okay, there's the back vertical bar. And then we yarn over and we pull up a loop. And we want to make sure that our loop sizes are uniform. We don't want to have this pulling this really super tight and have this one be looser. We want them about the same height always. And especially with the knit stitch because it has a tendency to make the fabric curl. And you'll see that in a moment. But we don't have to worry about the curling so much. Um, just, we just want all of our stitches to always be uniform. Um, and the reason why we don't have to worry about the curling is the place where it would curl is where we're going to be connecting it. And so that will make that not a problem. So to see that again, here's my next vertical bar. And there's the back vertical bar that's kind of behind this, uh, this chain stitch here. I'm going to go right in between the two of those. Sometimes you might want to just go under here and then go through to the back if that makes it easier for you. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Go to the next one. So sometimes to find your way, you might want to just go under that bar and then kind of poke through to the back. And with knit stitches, you just really want to kind of lift those up to make sure that they're not getting too tight as you go along. So just work that stitch all the way to the end and then I'll show you how to do the edge stitch. Okay, so I just did my last regular stitch and now I'm at the edge stitch. 
And this yarn is great for seeing this edge stitch. I want to show you that it has, actually I'm going to take this stitch out for a second. So you can see this was my second to last stitch. This is the edge stitch and this is actually the first chain of the return pass. Okay, and there's the space in between the last edge stitch and the second to last stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and redo that stitch. Make sure that that loop is the same height as the others. So now the edge stitch, you can see it has three threads. It has this inner thread right here. And then it has these two outer threads. The one in the front crosses over the one in the back. And what we do is we go on top of the inner one and under the two outer threads like that. Yarn over and pull up a loop. That's one of the hardest things in Tunisian crochet and if you just study what I just showed you there you'll have no problem with it. Just keep practicing that. Alright, so then we're going to work the same kind of return pass that we did before. We're going to yarn over and pull through one and when you do that Make sure that just like we kept all these stitches uniform, you want the height of this to be the same height as this one here. So like you don't want it, you don't want it coming down real tight. Um, you just want it the same height as this stitch. So pull through that one. And now I like to hold on to that stitch and then do my yarn over pull through two. And then what I usually do is I just kind of grab the last stitch that I just made as I go along. And um, that might just be personal preference, but I find that it helps keep my work uniform. So work that all the way back until you have one loop on your hook. Okay, so now we're going to begin section A. And for section A, there's going to be four rows and the repeat is going to be this portion right here. So for, this is our repeat section for the both the hat and the cowl. The hat is going to get three repeats and the cowl, you're going to do two. Just repeat this twice. Hat, you're going to repeat it three times. For the hat only, you're going to have these two extra stitches, which will always be knit. And for the cowl, you won't have those. You'll just have your edge stitch. And actually, this is just an edge stitch. Okay, so for row one, the repeat goes knit, knit, make one. This dot stands for make one. And we're actually going to be making this with a full stitch. So actually before I was, I was wrong when I said we weren't going to be using a full stitch. We are using a full stitch in this pattern. Uh, then we knit four and then we knit two together. For the cowl, you'll do that twice and then your edge stitch. For the hat, you'll do this three times and then your, your two extra knit stitches and your edge stitch. All right, so let's take a look at that. So we're going to do two knit stitches and we're just going to, just like we did before, going to go in between the the front vertical bar and the back vertical bar and pull up a loop and do that a second time. And then we're going to, now we're going to do a make one and we're going to do that with a full stitch. So remember when I talked about the space in between the stitches, 
that's where we're going to go in to make our stitch. We just go into that space, yarn over, and pull up a loop. It's very similar to the knit stitch, it's just that it's between stitches. Then we're going to do four more knit stitches. So one, two, three, four. You'll notice I, I really pull up those loops each time. It's just the nature of the knit stitch that you kind of need to do that um, so that your work doesn't get too tight. Now we're going to knit two together and this is pretty easy. You just go under the vertical bar of the first stitch and then go in between the front and vertical bars of the second stitch yarn over and pull through a loop through all of that. And that pulls those two stitches together. And that's what creates the, the movement in this pattern. So that's one repeat completed. So then you just, for the hat, you're gonna repeat that, those eight stitches two more times. So, um, be careful that when you've done these two together, you're still going to be able to see a little bit the one in the back. Make sure you don't go into that one again. That one's done and finished. So now we go and we do just like before two knit stitches, one, two. Then we're going to make one in between this stitch and this stitch. And then four knit stitches, one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to knit these two together. So I'm going to go under the first one, first vertical bar, and then go through the back as if to knit on the second one. Pull that through both. And that's our second repeat completed. So if you are doing the cowl, you'll be at your edge stitch. And if you're doing the hat, you'll have one more repeat to do. I'll meet you at the edge stitch. Okay, so I'm at the end here. Since I'm making the hat, I have two more knit stitches to do. One, two, and now we're at the edge stitch. So to the untrained eye, this may look kind of um, confusing, but if you just kind of pull it out and look at it, you can find your way around it. So here we have, this is from our first row. We have the front part of that edge stitch and the back part. And this is the edge stitch of our second row. We have the front thread and the back thread. Okay. And this here is the first chain of our return pass. This here is the inner thread of our edge stitch. Okay. And you can see the inner thread of the first rows edge stitch. So we're just going to go on top of that inner thread and under the two outer threads, yarn over and pull up a loop, making sure it's the same height as the others. And now just work a return pass, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two, all the way back to the beginning until you have one loop left on your hook. So for row two of section A, we have our first loop on our hook, and then we have three knit stitches, make one, three knit stitches, and then two together. That's our pattern repeat for row two. So for the cowl, you'll do that repeat twice, and then your edge stitch, and for the hat, you'll do it three times, plus your two knit stitches, and then your edge stitch. So row two is going to be three knit, 
one, two, three, make one with a full stitch, knit three, one, two, three, and then knit two together, one, two. Okay, so just repeat that to the end. So let's take the opportunity to look at our edge stitch again. You can see how they're starting to stack up and they have this really pretty uniform look to them. Just kind of pull it out so you can see it really well. There's the edge stitch. We have the two side threads, the inside thread. This is the first chain of the return pass. We're going to go right in here on top of the inside thread and under the two outside threads. Yarn over and pull up that loop. And then we just work our return pass as usual. Yarn over, pull through one loop, and then yarn over, pull through two loops. All the way back until you have just one loop left on your hook. Okay, so we are now at the beginning of row three. This is what your work will be looking like now at the end of row two of section A. Starting to see some movement in the pattern. So for row three, our repeat, of course we have our starting edge stitch and our repeat starts this time with four knit stitches and then a make one. You see how we have the make one is traveling. That's what's going to cause some of the, the, the meandering of or the traveling wave of this pattern. We make one with a full stitch, knit two, and then knit two together. For the cowl, you'll work two repeats of that and then your edge stitch. For the hat, you'll work three repeats of that, two knit stitches, and then your edge stitch. So you may have noticed that your knits always add up to six on either side of the, of the make one. And of course you have your knit two together. As you do this pattern, you'll start to recognize if you're in the right place. We're knitting four here, by the way. Knit one, two, three, and four. And now we're going to make one. And you'll notice that this stitch was in the make one from the last round. You'll start to be able to recognize that. So there's our make one, and then we knit two more. One, two. You, again, you can see me pulling up those loops so that because with the knit stitch, they have a tendency to get kind of tightened down. Um, it's, it's just sort of the anatomy of the stitch. This ridge back here wants to pull them forward, so. Now we knit two together, go under that first one, go into the second one as if to knit, yarn over and pull through both. And that is one repeat completed and then just repeat it to the end. So, whoops, <laughs> let's take a look at that edge stitch again because it's one of the hardest things, but it's also, once you get it, it's, it's pretty easy. So you can see how they're all lining up very nicely now. It becomes easier to see as you go. And especially with this yarn, it's really, it's a great yarn for a beginner Tunisian project because it's very easy to see the stitches. So here's our inside thread. Here are our two outside threads. Go on top of the inside thread, under the outside threads, yarn over and pull up a loop. And you can see how nice this edge is being created. And then we just do our regular or normal return pass, yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through two, all the way back 
to the beginning. So for row four, our repeat is, of course we have our first stitch, our edge stitch, and our repeat starts with five knit. One, two, three, four, five. Make one with a full stitch, knit, and then knit two together. That's your repeat. For the cowl, do it twice. For the hat, do it three times. And at the end of the cowl, you'll have an edge stitch. At the end of the hat, you'll have a two knits and your edge stitch. So let's take a look at that. We're going to knit five. One, two, whoops, sorry about that. Three, four, five. Make one in that space. Knit one and then knit two together. And you can see our knit two togethers are kind of, the, it creates this travel to the right. So just repeat that to the end. And here we are at the edge stitch again. Again, you can see them lining up nicely on top of each other and you can also see your work starting to lean in towards the right. That's because of how this pattern is designed. So we're just going to do our edge stitch, go over this inner thread and under the two outer threads, yarn over, pull up a loop, then we yarn over and pull through one. This is our return pass, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way back until we have just one loop left on our hook. And, you know, one thing about working with this bigger yarn is it does require a little bit of uh, muscling with your hands. You do kind of have to, even when you're working in regular crochet, when you're working with thicker yarns, it's a more muscular activity, I find. And with Tunisian, it's no different. But the, you know, the results come together more quickly. And also, um, it's so pretty, the, uh, the effect of the, the chunkier yarn. Okay, so that is our whole section A completed. And now we're going to do a section B. Section B is just where we just knit all the way across. So you're going to have your edge stitch and then in every stitch across is going to be a knit stitch. So and don't worry about this chart, how the things don't always um, line up. Just, just focus on what your, um, what your line is, what, you know, what your repeat is. So go ahead and work this section B, which is just knit all the way across, and I will meet you back here where we will start section C. All right, so we're ready to begin section C, row one. We start, of course, with our the first loop on our hook. That's this, this line here. And then our repeat uh, starts with knitting two together. Then we knit five. We make one with a full stitch, and then we knit one. So just like in the A section, the knits on either side of the make one always add up to six. If you're doing the cowl, you're going to do this repeat twice, plus your edge stitch. If you're doing the hat, you're going to do this three times, then your two knit stitches, and then your edge stitch. So let's take a look at row one of section C. We have our first loop on our hook. Here's our second 
This is our first stitch here, which corresponds with this loop on our hook. So we're going to be starting in stitches two and three. We're going to be knitting those together. So we're going to go under the first one and then go into the second one as if to knit it, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Now we're going to knit five. Remember, don't go into this one again. Those two have been knitted together. That's a place where you can um, make an error and end up with too many stitches. So we're going to start on this next one with knitting five. One, two, three, four, five. Then we're going to make one with a full stitch in between these two stitches in this space. Make one and then knit one. Okay, so again it's knit two together, knit five, one, two, three, four, five, make one. Don't be afraid to pull open your work so you can see where your stitches are and then knit one. So go ahead and repeat that again if you're making the hat and if not you'll be at your edge stitch for the cowl. So I just uh, finished my third section of row one in section C. So now I'm here at the end I've got two more knit stitches. One two and then my edge stitch and just work a normal return pass. Yarn over pull through one. Make sure that that edge stitch doesn't you know gets to the full height of these other guys. Yarn over pull through two loops all the way back. So I just finished my row one of section C and I just wanted to show you this is how my work is looking. So and I just wanted to show you that, to show that to you so that you can know that that's normal, that as you're, when you're working in all knit stitch, it does tend to curl. And when you finish, when we finish our project, that curl will come out of it when we sew it up together. All right, so let's go to row two. So row two, we have our edge, our beginning stitch. We start with a knit two together and then we knit four. Then we make one and then we knit two. So again, our knits on either side of the make one always add up to six. And then for the hat, you'll have these two and your edge stitch, and for the cowl, you'll just have the edge stitch. Again, for the cowl, you'll work this repeat twice. And for the hat, you will work this repeat three times. So let's see how row two looks. Again, we're going to start, you know, and as I said before, pull your work apart so that you can really see where you are. Because sometimes as you're working, things kind of look a little like bunched up or um, distorted. So just lift up that stitch. You can see that that one matches up with this is that first vertical bar. That means this is the second one. So we're going to knit these two together. Go under the second one, go into the third one as if to knit, yarn over and pull up a loop. You don't have to have a lot of tension on your yarn because you really want these loops to come up. Again, Remember not to go into this stitch because we just knit those two together. Now we're going to knit four. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to make one and I'll just point out to you, this is a way to see if you're on track as you're going along. In section C, the make one always happens right before the make one from the previous row. And you'll start to begin to recognize that as we go along. So then we make one and then we knit 
to. And I'll just show you that sometimes this, this make one um, has a way of kind of not really looking like it's your next stitch. So really, you see there's that front vertical bar and there's the back vertical bar. So don't miss that one. That can be another place where you can have an error and in that case you'd be missing a stitch. So that's knit one and knit two. So that's one repeat completed. Let me just show you that one more time. So we knit two together, then we knit four, one, two, three, and four. And as we go along, these stitches are gonna get a little kind of cramped in here. So you, you really do have to pull them apart. This is where we're gonna make that stitch, okay, between this one and this one. So we're gonna go in here, make that stitch, pull that up so that it's not becoming too squashed. And then we're gonna knit two, one and two. One, two, okay. So if you're doing the cowl, you'll be at your, your edge stitch and for the hat, just do one more repeat. Okay, so I'm just gonna do my edge stitch here. And then we're just gonna do the normal return pass, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, all the way back until you have just one loop left on your hook. And I'm also just gonna show you as I'm doing the return pass on this row, you start to get places where your stitches are further apart. See, we just this is where we did a two together and it, it makes this kind of a little bit of a a gap. So just make sure that when you do that, that stitch, that yarn over pull two together, that that stitch is not becoming overly elongated, that it's the same size as all the other ones. And also, as we get to the place where we made a, where we were, we've been making stitches, they start getting cramped together. So make sure that those, those chains, this is where we made one, just, you can kind of open up your work a little bit like this to make sure that those chains aren't getting to be too small. Okay, so you really want to strive for uniformity in all of your stitches. And as you, as you get more practice, you will figure out how to hold your work you know, sometimes if they're like here, they're kind of a little bit further apart. I just, I pull the work up like this to get them to, to bridge that gap. And this is how it's starting to look. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so for row three, we have our starting stitch. We have, for our repeat, we have knit two together. Then we knit three, then our full stitch, then we knit three. So that is our repeat for row three. So for row three, again, Pull open your work so you can see where everything is. This is our first vertical bar, which we don't work into. This is the second one. We're gonna knit these two together, the second and the third. Okay. Then we're going to knit three. One, two, and three. And our make one is always happening right before the make one from the last row. You can see this, this line here. And it gets a little, cra a little cramped, a little crowded. So just open up, the, open up between, those, between these two stitches to make sure you're getting into the right space to do your make one. Make sure that you're pulling that up the same height as all the other stitches. And then we'll, make, we'll uh, knit our last three. two, three, and then just repeat that 
twi uh, once more for the cowl, twice more for the hat. I just want to show you one other thing, uh, something that can help you know that you're on the right track as you get to row three and four of section C. You'll see these are our two togethers, and you see how they're traveling now to the left. So you'll know that the next one is going to come on top of this line, so we know that we're in the right place because you see how it continued that line. And just here at the edge stitch again, you're probably starting to see it more clearly now. This up here is the chain of our, the first chain of our return pass, and here's our edge stitch. We're going to go right in there. And just work a normal return pass by yarning over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops all the way back. And again, as you come to the places where your stitches are really getting crowded, make sure you kind of make sure that these, these um, chains aren't getting squashed. So just kind of open up your work. And conversely, as you're getting to the places where there's gaps, kind of um, bend your work this way to make sure that the reverse pass chains are not getting um, too elongated. We really want to strive for uniformity in the stitches. And I'll just go all the way to the end here so that you can see what it looks like for me. And you can see how the work now starts to slide, go towards the left. So in section A, our work travels to the right, and in section B, our work travels to the left. So, so we're ready for row four. We have our edge stitch, and then our repeat begins. Again, we start with a knit two together, then we knit two, then a make one, then knit four. That's our repeat. Do this twice for the cowl, three times for the hat. At the end of the cowl, you'll have your edge stitch. At the end of your hat, you'll have two knits and your edge stitch. So let's take a look at that. Again, open your work so you can really see where you're at. This is our first stitch. This is the vertical bars that correspond with it. We don't go into those. We start with the second, and in this case, the third, since we're knitting these two together. Now we knit two. One, two, and we're going to make one right before the place where we made one in the last row. Really open up that space so you get into the right place. Yarn over and pull up a loop. That's a full stitch. And now we're going to knit four. One, two, three, four. And that's the repeat. So for the, um, and at the end of each repeat, you should have eight more stitches, two, four, six, eight. We don't count. This is, we don't count the first stitch in our repeats. So do two more of those for the hat, one more for the cowl. So this is the end of row four. Just work a normal return pass back. And then what you're going to do is work another section B, which is going to be all knit, all across. And 
And then what you will do is, so this is one large repeat, A and C. There, it's actually A, B, and C, B. You're going to work these two sections together four more times. So you'll have a total of 10 sections. It'll be A, B, C, B, A, B, C, B for a total of, um, the two together will be five times and them separately is 10 times. And I will meet you when you have all 10 of them. It'll be, your piece will measure somewhere around um, 20 to 21 inches long and if you if you want it to be if you want your cowl to be longer you can work more of these sections um, it's going to look neatest if you finish on a, uh, a section CB um, if you need to add just a little bit more space you can always do just a couple extra rows of just knit before we sew it up but either way I will meet you when you have completed your piece to about to the length that you want and then I will teach you how to do the bind off and how to sew it together sometimes a picture is uh, as I say speaks a thousand words so the green is section A and the blue is section C and each of these yellow lines is a section B. So this is what I'm talking about when I say you're going to do five of these groups of sections. So we actually started with that, that first knit row is here. And recall we're working back and forth this way. So we just completed a section A B, C, and B. So that's just, that's one right there. And then, so you're going to do that whole thing that we just did four more times for a total of five times. Okay. You're going to do that section, repeat that, that kind of mega section, if you will, five times. And I'll meet you at the end of this row B where we will connect, where we will do our bind off and then we'll connect from here to here. We'll sew it together. And if for any reason you need it to be a little, um, if you need the circumference around your head to be a little bigger, you can always add a few extra rows of just knit stitch. Uh, and you can kind of test that by, you know, as you get towards the end, kind of wrapping it around your head. It'll be going around your head this way. So we're working back and forth this way, but the hat is going to go around your head this way. And this Tunisian has a good amount of stretch in that direction. So um, it's okay if it's a little shorter than the circumference of your head because it is going to stretch a little bit and you do want it to be somewhat snug. Okay, so I have finished 10 of the double sections of A and C, of course with a, with a B row in between each of them. And I have done my last row of just knit and now we are ready to bind off. So let me show you how to do that. When doing the bind off, you can take off your extension, your extender. And uh, when I did my cowl, I did a bind off in Tunisian simple stitch. And that created this line here that you can see is the simple stitch look. Uh, and you can do yours that way as well. Um, but I'm going to teach you, so to, if you want to do it that way, what you do is you go under, you start with the second stitch, 
You go under that front vertical bar, you yarn over, you pull up a loop, and then you pull that loop through the loop on your hook, and you do that all the way across. Uh, but I'm going to do <clears throat> the bind off in knit stitch <clears throat> so that we keep the knit look all the way to the end. So we're going to go into the second stitch as if to knit. So we go in between the front and the back vertical bar all the way through to the back, yarn over, pull up a loop, make sure they're the same height, and then pull the first loop on the left through the loop on the right. And you're just going to do that all the way across, slip stitching all the way across uh, in the knit stitch. So I'm just here at my edge stitch, last stitch, turn over, pull up that loop and pull it through the loop on my hook. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to uh, pull off an amount that's about four times as long as my work and then I'm going to cut that yarn. And then I'm going to draw that through, draw that yarn through. And then just pull that tight. And now we're going to sew it up. So you can see when you do a bind off in knit stitch, you have your, your top edge is kind of pulled forward. And so um, that's why sometimes you might not use it depending upon what you're doing, you know, what the, how you're going to be using the fabric that you're making. So, but I think this is going to work out well for us in how we're going to be stitching it together. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your piece and you're going to fold it so that your starting edge and your finishing edge are right next to each other. And then we're going to thread our yarn needle. And then we're going to begin the mattress stitch where we stitch the beginning, sorry, the finishing end to the beginning end. So I'm going to start by going into this um, corner and I'm just going to get that secured well. going up through here one more time. So I'm going to do the corners, sew those kind of twice so that they're really secure. And now we're ready to begin the mattress stitch. So the way this is going to work is you can see these V's on one side and you can see the V's on the other side. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through underneath the upper one on this side and then underneath the upper one on this side. And so what's going to happen is they're going to get matched up like, like so. And 
and you can you can do several before you pull through your yarn so here's that upper one on this side and then the upper one on this side and you're just going to go back and forth Gonna pull it snug. And just keep working that. here at the corner and I'm just going to go through this corner one more time get that nice and secure and I'm going to wrap it around so that it's Here. And I'm just actually going to tie that in a knot because actually this is going to be the bottom of our hat. And now we can sew this in um, on the inside. So just turn it inside out and then just go in and out of one of the back ridges. just come down this other side here this way it'll be in the back of your work and nobody will see it and then we can cut that okay so this hat is a, just a little bit wider at the bottom, so that's what we had intended. This is going to be the edge that we're going to gather up into making the hat. So I'm just going to sew this end in to get it out of the way. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is we're going to be sewing in and out of each of these edge stitches 
that was our left hand edge and we're going to gather up the hat so I'm going to go in here and then for each of these I'm going to go in and out of each of these edge stitches all the way around and as I go around, I'll just pull the yarn periodically through. that's all been threaded through and now what we're going to do is we're going to pull it like a drawstring to close up the top and you're going to pull it really tight and then what we're going to do is tie a knot there might get that really secure okay so now once that's done now I can take the rest of this yarn and I can sew that this top together so that it's really secure So you're just going to sew back and forth from one side to the other side. And this will make it secure. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew in these two ends around the top here.
And then we can just cut our ends. I'll, actually, what I'll do is I'll just do one little knot here. Just for extra good measure. And cut that. Okay, so let's take a look at how it turned out. Wow, look at that. So, so pretty. Look at that texture. And even our seam is, is very nice and neat in the back of the hat. Now you can make a pom-pom for this or wear it as is. I'm going to make a pom-pom. I've started it here. I have plenty of yarn left over to make a pom-pom. Take my pom-pom out of this pom-pom maker. I'll put a link below to the pom-pom maker. And also if you want to know how to make one, um, you can check out my other hat, um, one of my other hats. Snowdrifts Cowl and Hat Set has um, shows you how to make them. You can just kind of trim it up to make it even. And now what I'll do is I will take these two tails and I've learned from experience to have nice long tails when you're attaching a pom-pom. It's better to have them be a little too long than short and running out when you're trying to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these threads and put them right through the top of this hat. And pull that pom-pom right up, right on the top there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into another side come up through the hat. I'm going to go through the center of the pom-pom. Come out another side. Pull that through. And then I'm going to just go back down one more time. Through the center of the pom-pom, back down into the top of the hat. Okay, I'm going to make sure that these threads don't mess up our little pom-pom. Pull that through tight. And then I'm going to turn the hat inside out to sew in the rest of those ends just around the inside of the hat to secure it. And you just go around a couple of times until you feel like it's not going to be coming out. I'm 
once you've done that a few times, then you can just uh, cut your yarn. Oops. Okay, that should be secure. I'm going to cut my yarn. So there we have it, your sideways wavy Tunisian knit hat and cowl is complete. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please be sure to subscribe for all the upcoming free videos and patterns. And please also share your thoughts, questions, and links to your pictures in the comments below. I can't wait to see what you have made. Uh, in the description below is the links to all the materials and also um, how you can sign up for the Crochet Magical Mystery Tour and uh, anything else you might need to know. All right, thanks for joining. See you soon, bye-bye.